She's a dear mother, right? She has a very, very painful story, right? And she actually gave the authorities some trouble. She emailed to all the prime minister, the PMO, the ministers, right, for attention. I think she's someone respectable, admirable, someone who actually has a lot of love for her two sons, particularly the younger son, who is now in drug rehab center. Without further ado, let's give a big hand to Karina Tan. Oyos. about what happened to my family, my son especially. I have a little correction. Uh, it's my elder son, not the younger one. His name is Ian Law. And he's not well treated because, um, you see, as parents, uh, when we enlist him into national service, we didn't know that he already have some mental instability. I mean, you know, boys are boys. They can be rascals. They can be very mischievous, very naughty, and he keeps saying, Mommy, I don't want to go serve national service. I don't want to go na serve national service. So everyone in the family, in-laws and not, will just stand behind and push him. No, you have to go. This is the law. If you don't go, we'll get into trouble. You will get into trouble. So we just blindly follow the law. We followed the law and guess what happened? Um, mean death shockingly, do not have the expertise to diagnose people with mental problems. They are very good with physic physicality, maybe emotionally, I don't know, but mental issues they totally don't have. Because um, when Ian was enlisted um, to try to escape NS, he went to take some illegal drugs so that he can be uh, caught and be sent to DRC so that he thinks that by doing this, he can escape national service. But then that's not, that's not the case because after he served uh, DRC, they, they sent him back to, uh, to detention and then they sent him back to uh, uh, civil defense. And then he has to go through all these uh, very tedious uh, uh, um, drills that um, the SEDF will uh, impose on, the, uh, on, on these young boys. And because Ian is mentally not stable, he's not able to take the vulgarities, the, uh, the verbal abuse that was hurled onto him every single day. I mean, how would you feel as a boy if your officers when they open a sentence, they, tell, they, they, they use vulgarity aiming at your mother's genital. I think this is, this is one of the worst things you do to a kid, to a child, to a, to, to, a young, to a young guy freshly out of school. This is unacceptable. I mean, you have double standard outside. They're supposed to behave like a civil person. But inside, you have officers screaming vulgarities at them every single day for two years. Guess what happened to this boy? Mentally, what do you think happened to the mind of this boy or any other boy? Now, let me ask you, if you have a son, a nephew, a brother, a son-in-law, you are involved. Make it voluntary, not compulsory, not mandatory. Because I believe if it's voluntarily, they will really, really serve national service and not choking. How many of them have choking? How many? They will take fake MCs all the time. They smoke like chimneys, they drink like fishes. These are the bad habits that they pick up. Anyway, enough of that. I wrote my last 12 pages letter to our PM Lee and he had not replied. I sent him a reminder he had not replied. Over the years, since 2012, I have been writing again and again and again. I, I wrote to Chief of Police, Mr. So Wai Wa, telling him to stop the barbaric treatment they had been giving Ian because uh, Ian said that he's suicidal and guess what? The treatment they gave him is they chain him, 
to the bed for more, on two occasions for more than a month with a white light shining on him. What do you think will happen to him for more than a month on two occasions? Just because he says he's suicidal. And then, to me, that is mind rape. Mind raping him. And there is no other rape worse than mind raping a boy that is so helpless. And then when he's discharged finally from civil defense, he was totally broken. If you're interested to know what is happening to my family, you can visit my Facebook page, Karina Tan. And tomorrow, by tomorrow, I, will, I already have a few uh, letters. Uh, the, uh, I have documented correspondence with all the relevant, relevant ministries. So if you're interested, you can go to my Facebook page and then be updated. And what I'm saying also is, this is for all Singaporeans. Your son, your brother, your nephew, your son-in-law, they are all involved. We don't want to have another Aloysius. We don't want to have another Dave Lee. In fact, what happened to Ian has far-reaching consequences than Dave Lee. Dave Lee was quite swift, actually, even Aloysius. The, 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 the amount of suffering, pain, it was heart-wrenching just watching Ian. The amount of... Uh, I mean, we, we sent him to IMH, we sent him to Tan Tak Seng Hospital, we sent him to NAMS for, uh, for drug addiction. He will, he, will, um, he will alternate between legal drugs and illegal drugs, legal drugs, just because the voices in, the, in his head keep telling him to do things like that. And the last in, Ju in June, the voices in, in his head again told him to take some illegal drugs and surrender himself to the police, which he did. He's now in DRC, and guess what? They gave him the same treatment. When he said he's suicidal, they chained him up to the bed again. And then when he, when he kept, he, he, was, he, was, um, he was charged in prison for failing to take his medication and hiding it. He is mentally not stable. He just wanted to, I asked him, why, yeah, why, did you hide, why did you not take your medication? Why did you hide it? He said, oh, mommy, I want to take it at night so I can sleep. I said, then you have to talk to the doctor. You can't just hide like that. So he was charged. And guess what? What was the punishment? What was the sentence? Two strokes of cane for failing to take medication and hiding his medication. One week, in, they apparently have another kind of detention cell inside. One forfeited visit from the family. We have two televisits, I mean, we have two visits with him every month. So one forfeited, he will be given a bucket of water every morning for 10 minutes. He can use it for shower. And this bucket of water, is, he's supposed to consume it also for the whole day. And blended food for his meals. I mean, I, I get very, very emotional if I go into the details. So I'm not going to do it here. And I start crying. So what I, what, what, I, what I would suggest is, if you're interested to what happened, I don't believe that we are, uh, we, we, we are an isolated case. I believe there are many out there that have, been, that have gone through tremendous and great suffering. So I urge you, if you're interested, just go to my website and talk about it. Because I, I really don't want to cry again. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, another, another note is, and because of this, my health has greatly deteriorated. I'm now suffering from, I was suffering from very, very deep depression. I went to see two psychiatrists, one psychologist. Uh, I went to see my uh, MP, Dr. Tio. I went to see a social worker. I spoke to every single person I could speak to, and my tears has actually run dry. I, I had a big breakdown when I was in IMH because Ian's doctor refused to see me to talk about Ian. Anyway, so um, I'm not able to work for the last five years or more, and we have I, I've totally depleted of funds to help Ian and myself. We have, once he's out from DRC, um, I'm urging the authorities to let him out early so that we can bring him for alternative medical treatment because what uh, the pharmaceuticals in Singapore, I mean, we, they, 
they cannot help him. So we are going for alternate therapy, like a yoga, like forest therapy, you know, to be near nature. Because people like that, they need, they need to be with nature. Plant some plants, be with the greens and then be with the river, the mountains, this, and meditation also, because meditation has helped me a lot, so I believe it will help Ian too. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, Karina, a big hand for her. Yeah, I just want to ask Karina a few questions. Yeah, how do you think the authorities can handle your son better, especially while he's going through national service? Uh, no, he's, uh, he's been discharged. So when he was discharged uh, in 2015, uh, we have to send him to IMH and Tantasing Hospital. And finally, they diagnosed him as a schizo. So I'm just hoping that uh, PM Lee and uh, the rest of the ministries that I have addressed this to can respond because they are ignoring my letters. They are not responding. I've been writing and writing. I will post all my letters, most of it, in fact, on my Facebook page, and you can see from the beginning to the end. Two, I started writing in 2012 until like two months ago. No reply, or they just ignore. So I also heard that you have written to CPA board to request for funds from your ordinary account to treat your son. So how, how, how has that been all along? Oh, they stick to their rules that um, they will not release it and I have to keep it for my retirement, which I find it very strange because um, what is more important now is to make sure that life is sustainable now. Life is not sustainable now because I'm not working, my funds are depleted. I need money to help my son to go for alternative healing. So they are not, they, I mean, to me, it's, it's very simple. It's just pure common sense, right? If my house is on fire right now, I do not ration water for future use. That's exactly what they are doing. They're asking me to do. Ration for future use. Yeah, ration for future use. Uh, like uh, most of these this people in this, in this ministry is from the lowest help position to the highest. They don't have common sense. When you read my letter, you will know. Maybe I just briefly read to you the first, the first uh, page. Oh no, no, too long. <laughs> too long. <laughs> uh, maybe just a few minutes, huh? Give her a hand, Karina. A very brave and very respectable mother. When she told me she wanted to speak, I actually told her, yeah, you should. You should actually let your voices be heard. I think a lot of you have differences, but let us be more brave. Let us be a Karina who dare to come up to speak, right? As all speakers, right, she has a chance to wave the national flag with me. Give her a hand, Singapore, Karina. Yeah, let's leave this high. We are Singapore, Singaporeans first. Singapore for Singaporeans. Thank you, Karina. Right, thank you very much.